If you found yourself flipping to the cover of the bulletin and reading the phrase, hope in a field, and then questioning how you were supposed to hear a message of hope from that gospel text for today, know that you are not alone. After all, many of us look at the season of Advent as a time to celebrate the sure and certain hope in the coming of the Christ child and for the future of the world. And yet we're met with this text from Matthew, which begins with the word, Jesus' words of, about that day and hour, no one knows, and then paints a picture of a dystopian and violent scene that I don't know about you, but does not stir up much of a sense of hope in me, and instead reminds me of the hurt and suffering of the world outside, that I will be honest, I often come here to escape for a few hours every Sunday morning. Maybe you're like me, and you would much rather stick with the beautiful Isaiah text, which begins, in the days to come, and then paints a beautiful picture of peace and transformation of weapons into tools that are used to cultivate creation rather than destroy it. Yet, remember, we're embracing our full cup. And so with this embracing of the whole scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament, we get to experience the fullness of the love of God and the fullness of the message of hope coming from these texts that we read this morning. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, as a point of clarification, the word gospel, meaning good news, does not equate with good feeling. The gospel is oftentimes very challenging and hard to hear and wrestle with. So while the gospel text from Matthew on its own does not seem to point us to a message of hope, what happens if we embrace our full cup of God's love, grace, and mercy and pick up the words of Jesus and put them in the text from Isaiah? Imagine for a moment, I know I'm asking you to imagine a lot of things this morning, bear with me. But imagine that you're standing in a field and holding on to a tool. That tool has given you power. That tool has given you status. That tool has offered you privilege, a sense of security and safety. And now your God is telling you to give it up. Your God is telling you to let go of what that tool is and to transform it into something new. And as you beat your tool, this tool that has served you so well in the past, it has almost become a part of you, an extension of who you see yourself as, as a piece of your identity. You feel as if you're beating on yourself, stripping away all that you have worked so hard to build up. Suddenly, this calling from God becomes something so much harder. Letting go of this tool that has served you so well in the past calls you to have courage, calls you to have trust, and even calls you to grieve what you will lose in giving up that tool. So bringing this text to today, let's turn the question on ourselves and ask, what are the tools that God is asking us to give up? What tools, weapons do we hold on to that we need to let go of so that God can transform them? Maybe it's our status. Maybe it's our privilege. Maybe it's our fear of the stranger. Maybe it's our anger. Maybe it's our righteousness. I'll say it again, it's a hard calling. It's hard to let go of these tools that have served us so well in the past and trust in something new. But it's from this place of tragedy, loss, and violence where true hope can bubble up. It's in this place where we can hear the thread of hope calling us forward, where we can feel ourselves jump a bit at no longer holding on to that weapon of destruction. Why? Because, friends, that's the power of the word of God. At the end of verse 3 in the passage from Isaiah, if you want to look it up in your bulletin, I'll give you a chance. It says, For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The word instruction there is really Torah, 
Torah, the law of God, but it's so much more because this line is written in synonymous parallelism with the next line, which is a very, very nerdy academic way of saying that the two lines emphasize each other. And so friends, at Torah, at the word of the Lord, when God speaks, hearts melt, division disappears, and violent energy is used to pound weapons into tools used to create and cultivate creation rather than destroy it. At one word from God, true hope springs forth from tragedy. This imagery reminded me of a story. In 1914, the world was being rocked by the war. Not yet named the World War I, the Great War was a tragic time of destruction and death. But come Christmas Eve on the Western Front, instead of gunfire, soldiers could hear the singing of Christmas hymns. The singing went back and forth until all joined in singing the hymn, O Come, O Come, All Ye Faithful. At that point, thousands of British, Belgian, and French soldiers laid down their weapons and began to mingle with the German soldiers in the no man's land on the front line. Gifts were exchanged, more hymns were sung, and the dead were honored and buried, and some troops even played soccer with makeshift soccer balls. It was a moment of peace in a terrible war. And it all began with singing a few hymns, many of which directly quote the words of scripture, or in other words, friends, the word of the Lord tools of destruction were set down, divisions were melted, and community was cultivated. At one word from God, true hope sprung forth from tragedy. Friends, this is the power of the hope that God is calling us into. This is not hope of wishful thinking or an empty promise or an overhyped optimism that the world can give us. This hope is peace at one word from God. This hope is belonging at one word from God. This hope is transformation at one word from God. And so I invite you all to stand. And join in a practice that I did a few months ago, but there's definitely beauty in ritual. So as you stand, I invite you to spread your arms out wide with your palms facing down. And I ask you the question again. What are the tools that God is asking you to give up? What tools, weapons do you hold on to you, that you need to let go of so that God can transform them? As we stand with our palms facing down, we are doing so to symbolize surrendering these tools to God. We surrender these tools with hope, knowing God will transform them to tools of creation. And then we bring our hands to our hearts because we know that we are a people of hope, hope in transformation, hope in renewal, hope in the Christ child lying in the manger, and hope in the empty tomb on Easter morning. And finally, we spread our arms out wide with our palms facing up, giving thanks to God, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, the one who calls us to renewal, the one who calls us to transformation, the one who gives us hope. Amen. You may be seated as we hear an anthem from our Carol on Hale and Bell Choir.